must have. Now, you say, what's the difference here? The difference here is I don't really know how to score those, or I don't want to take the time to play in all of those chords. I know that they have a, for example, you'll, here you'll see they have a drop two super sax, which takes the second voice below the top, dropping it an octave, um, which is a typical five-part voicing for saxes and for brass. So I know that's there. So I'm just going to create the chords, and I'm going to put in the melody, which is quicker than me playing in all the chords. I'm going to type in the, melody, the chords right on top of it, and then I'm going to use the, the band of the box, and it will read chromatic chords, or it will read passing tones, and it does a pretty decent job of using an algorithm. Now, it's usually not perfect, and I always have to change, tweak a couple of notes. But what I find is it really helps me get to that point quickly. Uh, this is a great tool for kids. If you want to, want to get them arranging, uh, perhaps they're composing a melody, uh, teach them to put their chords in, and then let them arrange for three or four voices and print it out to play a duet and eventually get to the point where they understand what they're doing. Um, okay, let's go to the desktop, and I'll show you how this works. I have a couple different uh, uh, examples here. First one is uh, just a simple lead sheet. And what I did was uh, I just entered RLE and uh, blowing the screen up here using the command plus and command minus so you can see the screen larger. Um, and uh, here's the first trumpet part, and I just entered the melody with the chords. Notice the chords are there. I didn't voice them all in, which takes a while for me to think through each voicing. I just put them in. Notice there's some passing tones uh, in the chord. So let me blow it out so you can see the score. And uh, now the way this works is selection tool. Well, everything... I've done so far is in selection tool, but uh, if you press escape, make sure you're there, and select the part that you want to uh, to apply. It could be some or all the parts. It could be just two or three bars. Uh, I'm going to select the whole melody in this case. Now the plug-in menu. Uh, this is one of the few things on Finale and uh, on Mac and Windows that looks different. In the Windows version, it actually says plug-ins, and in Finale, it has a little, looks like a plug if you look at it pretty closely. Uh, plug-ins window, scoring and arranging, band in a box, auto harmonizing. Now, in this case, if you look at my score here, I have a total of four parts, so I want to check the number of voices uh, to four. And then I have a couple of, I have a lot of options that you can check uh, through. Some are just a third above, two above, different uh, harmonies. Uh, super brass, which uh, takes a look at, at uh, just a typical brass. Uh, exploding uh, parts, but creating them as well. So three existing staves uh, is what I want, because I actually have the staves here. So now he will create staves at the bottom of the score. However, remember that if you use that, they're going to be in C. They won't know the right comp, uh, transposition. So I would always have the blind staves there. So if I select it, and I click OK, it now has blown in the, those parts. Let's take a look what happened here. So um, there's, a, again, some use of passing tones. It's not just uh, tone, uh, chord notes. There's chord notes here. Um, and, uh, you know, not a bad job of, of doing this. Now, I may think, oh, boy, that trumpet is way low. I can't deal with that. I might just copy the second part and put it down there and change it or go through it. Uh, so in that case, if I was an octave higher, things would, would look a little, little better. Uh, so it's never perfect. It doesn't really know that it's blowing it into a trumpet part. It doesn't know it's putting it wherever. It's just looking at the chord and using the algorithm and popping it in. Uh, again, this is something I use so often that, uh, uh, you know, I, I say thank you very much to the folks from uh, uh, PG Music and Finale for putting this in. Uh, let me show you another example because uh, there's a lot of, of uh, uh, ways to use this. Uh, Tom Johnson, the finale guy, uh, finale uh, presenter for 25 years, uh, showed this at a conference, and I said, oh, Tom, what a great uh, demonstration. I wanted to use this. Um, he put it uh, in the mood in, and he put just the first alto sax at the top, and notice he has the chord symbols at the top. Then he put just the first trumpet part in. So uh, if I – now it's still in the selection tool. I'm going to select the, the alto part. And we've got to be in the margin here if I want everything. Back to the plug-in, scoring and arranging, and band the box auto harmonizing. This time I want to go to five part. We're up in the saxes, and here's that drop two super sax. Drop two meaning it takes the second note of the chord. If it was, let's say, a D major seven, the second note would be C sharp from the top. It would blow that down an octave, C sharp below. Four existing staves, and it is 
Alto 2 because the Alto 1 part is where it is. Click OK, and there's a pretty decent harmonization. I showed you the other one because uh, the question comes up is well, how does it deal with chord tones? Because as, as you know, in the nude is all uh, chord tones. So you, I mean, how does it deal with, with passing tones? The cool thing is all you have to do is have this, the, the chord symbols in some part. You, could have, you can just be selecting the chord symbols from the piano part or the guitar part. Uh, and you don't have to select that one. Watch what happens when I select brass. I'm selecting that, but because the chords are somewhere in the score, uh, to me this is like awesome. It works. I don't have to re-put the chords in the trumpet. It magically sees that chord. So if I now go to uh, scoring arranging, and ban in a box, and now uh, I go to six part. This is one of those things that works great for this example. Uh, big band brass, and start it with trumpet two, and click OK, and it now just scored the parts. But you know, it's a couple weird things. Uh, when I did that, the second trumpet actually got a higher note, um, and so did the third. You know, so this is not really scored that great, but you know, I can move it down an octave easily, an octave, you know, select it, and, you know, press number eight, and I can make some changes. I got the voices there. Uh, I can copy and paste things back and forth. So the, uh, but the playing with this gives you a quick way of uh, blowing parts into their uh, proper area and getting all, knowing that you'll have all the notes in the chord uh, accounted for. Uh, you could do my way of exploding it and create a part above the saxophone and playing all the chords in and blowing them in that way, but then you'd have to have a separate place for this and a separate, you know, for the trumpet. So it's just another another option. So check it out. Okay, let me blow back uh, to go over the arranging and uh, band of the box plugins. Uh, you can see the steps here, um, and all of this, of course, is in the finale user manual. Uh, other scoring plugins that I find helpful in my work, um, drum groove, adding a quick drum groove, uh, the, uh, getting a, a beat to go along, again, kids writing a piece of music. Uh, there's also Latin groove, and if you're dealing with teaching kids what augmentation, diminution, and uh, retrograde and retrograde inversion is, the canonic utilities is an excellent, excellent one, all in the plugins here under, the, under scoring and arranging. Uh, also, I'm not going to show you this one, Cautionary Accidentals, but that's one of the things I do at the end of every scoring project. I run the uh, uh, Cautionary Accidentals, which uh, automatically looks at your score and sees if there was an accidental the bar before, the next bar puts the parentheses around it. That's one you definitely want to use. Uh, another one that I've been using a lot is Single Pitch. Uh, for example, let's say you have a, a melody uh, or a melodic part and you want to create a, a rhythmical part for the for, let's say, the percussion, or you want to create a rhythmical part for just kids reading uh, note rhythms. It's a great way of converting to a single pitch. Uh, so let me show you a couple of those. Um, let me share my desktop again. And uh, switch you back into Finale. So I'm going to take you back to that uh, R. Lee example. And I'm going to delete these staves out from the bottom just so you can see it. Deleting staves, so you have to select the staff tool, um, uh, select the handles, and if you press delete, it, this is one of the changes. You have to go to staff and delete, delete staves now. Well, actually, you could do shift delete as I'm just looking and learning for the <laughs> shortcut, but uh, you can't just hit delete if you used to be able to. Now, I want to just put a drum groove underneath RLE, and I'm going to... Uh, go to the selection tool again, press escape, escape, selection tool, uh, go to the plugins, uh, scoring and arranging, and there's drum groove uh, right here and also Latin percussion. So I'm going to select uh, drum groove. It says no region is selected. In other words, I didn't select a region, which is a good idea because you might not, you, you might want to put a Latin groove up to here and go with the swing groove after that. So you, know, you can select the bars that you want. If you don't select anything, uh, it still uh, gives you the option of, uh, of selecting the whole score. So there's a few extra uh, options in here. Uh, the one disappointment is straight str uh, swing is, oh, it's a nice say disappointment. It's pretty uh, basic, just a symbol part. Uh, you see the heavy funk, and I'll blow it up here, blow the max screen up here so you can see of the options. Uh, and any of you that are pretty savvy, uh, here's the note. Additional styles can be made available by placing standard MIDI files into the drum group folder located in the component files folder. I'm sure as many of you know, there are MIDI drum group uh, websites everywhere. Just do a Google for uh, MIDI 
drum grooves, and there's free ones all over the place, hundreds of thousands of them. You can listen to them and download them and, and name them and drop them into that folder. I haven't done that here, but uh, in this my version. Uh, let's say, uh, let's go to, um, uh, let's see here, Easy Bossa. And you have the options of saying notation with percussion. You can just say slash notation, and it'll play behind the slash notation. I'll take the percussion map, uh, and it creates a little drum groove. And uh plays back pretty well um, and gives you the basic drum groove. Notice that the drum part is not properly notated. It's all in one voice, uh, but it's, it plays back, so it's more of an audio uh, sound for you. Uh, I'm going to undo that. Uh, let me add a new staff, staff to the uh, score here. Adding staves once you're in a score uh, is through the staff tool, but be sure always, I almost always use staff, new staves with the setup wizard. You can get back to the setup wizard from the staff uh, window, and that's been around for a bunch of options. You get right back to what it looks like when you're doing a setup with Finale. Um, and let me put in a, uh, just a percussion part, or let's see, let me put in a uh, woodwind part here. I'll put a uh, Alpha Sax part in, okay, and click Finish. So now I have an Alpha Sax part. What I want to do with the Alpha Sax part uh, with this score is I just want to make this all one line, so it's a, a rhythmic uh, part. So I'm going to, uh, I can go back to the tool by pressing escape, selecting the part, dragging it down. Uh, now, uh, in this spot, I'm going to select that part and use the plugin. Uh, and the plugin for uh, making it, it's in a new, uh, a single dip. It's in a different uh, category, notes, beans, and rest editing and single pitch. And it asks for the octave that you want. So if I say B5 and press OK, it puts them all up there. So they're on Bs. And then I'm just going to hit 8, 8, you know, bring it down an octave. So uh, we're in transpose view. So one of the things you have to uh, remember is that it's going to move in, tra in contra pitch, not transpose. So if that's what's where you want the note. Uh, very handy, quick plug-in, select a note, and uh, I use this quite frequently when I create a, a melodic line, and with my middle school band kids, I want to create a little rhythmic part and have them chant the rhythm. Uh, real nice uh, application there. Okay, let me uh, go back to our slides. You can check out some of these other things on your uh, when the session is over. Staff Styles. Uh, uh, if you haven't checked out Staff Styles, Staff Styles is one of the coolest things in Finale. It allows you to do, uh, it comes from the Staff tool, and it allows you to do rhythmic notation, blank notation. You can hide a staff, do one bar repeats, any kind of instrument doublings. Uh, if you're writing, where you have to switch back and forth in the same part. Um, just a tremendous number of things. Also, if you want to have stemless notes, um, in other words, you want to just have the notes without the stems. You want to have the kids focus on the rhythm and melodic uh, part of the piece separately. It's, this is great for creating uh, uh, rhythmic uh, parts. This is what you're going to use if you're creating your jazz band parts with uh, uh, guitar, piano, bass, and drums. So let me give you an idea of, of how staff styles works. Uh, let me go and share that desktop again. And... Uh, switch over to Finale, and I have uh, an example from the Finale book here, uh, Blues for a Hiccup. Uh, this is a composition by Vince Leonard, um, and I just made it a little bigger so you can see the screen. I'm going to use my shortcut, right-click the mouse on Windows, and Option and Command on Mac. Uh, and notice what you do is you put in all the rhythms, and in the rest bars, I actually put in the rest. If you, so what... If you want the uh, notation to show up, the rhythmic notation, in the bars, put rest in the bars. If you just put a whole rest, it won't, it'll show up as a whole rest. 